Europe, Canada, Mexico all fighting back. America's first, third and fourth largest trading partner, steel and aluminum from those countries will no longer be able to flow freely into the United States. Their reactions have been absolutely furious. Canada's Prime Minister called the U.S. measures an affront. Take a listen. Let me be clear. These tariffs are totally unacceptable. These tariffs are an affront to the long-standing security partnership between Canada and the United States, and in particular, an affront to the thousands of Canadians who have fought and died alongside their American brothers in arms. Well, America's trading partners are fighting back with more than just words. They're actually imposing uh, tariffs of their own. They're retaliating. That pushed down industrial and consumer stocks on Wall Street. Let's take a look here. As I mentioned, the Dow closed some 250 points uh, down in the red, just off the lows of the day. We'll have more on the market reaction in just a moment with our Paul and Monica. The blip, though, the blip you see around 2 o'clock, where it really went down, was just as Canada, just as Justin Trudeau announced their response, the fact that they were planning to retaliate as well. Canada says that it will impose dollar-for-dollar dollar tariffs on American goods, including steel and aluminium. Those go into effect on July 1st, and about a month from now. And Mexico announced equivalent measures on items like steel, pork, and produce. Those will remain in force until the U.S. drops its own tariffs. And the EU is moving ahead with tariffs on some $7.5 billion worth of American goods. It will also lodge a case at the WTO as well. The president of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, said Europe simply could not let the US action go unanswered. This is a bad day for the world trade. What they can do, we are able to do exactly uh, the same. It's totally unacceptable that a country is imposing unilateral measures when it comes to world uh, trade. And on top of all of this, President Trump wants new measures on German car makers, according to a report. It sent the country's auto stocks plunging into the red. You see Volkswagen there down at two and a quarter percent, BMW down about one percent, Daimler also down about two percent as well. Let's get the reaction from Europe and Canada. We've got Tika Schubert who's joining us live now uh, in Berlin. Uh, Paula Newton, though, is joining us uh, from Ottawa. So, Paula, let me begin with you because one of Will Ross's main complaints was that. He slapped on tariffs because negotiations in terms of NAFTA was taking far longer than he had anticipated. I'm, I'm just curious, aside from the whole national security argument, what has Canada's reaction been to the rationale behind these tariffs? Well, they say that there absolutely is no rationale, but it has changed today. Today, we saw a marked change in the way Canada will now handle the Trump administration, and you will see that Europe will react that way as well. What am I talking about? Well, Justin Trudeau has been known to box. He's now taken the gloves off. Now, he refrained from any kind of name-calling or being that too hard against the Trump administration, but when asked bluntly, why do you think they did this after months of trying to negotiate, he just said, I don't know. You're going to have to ask the president. He made it clear that, look, the United States exports more than 50% of all of its steel where? To Canada. Now, that steel will have a 25% tariff uh, on it as well. What does it mean, Zane? It means for a trade war, game on. What was really key here, though, going back to NAFTA, Zane, was the fact that, uh, you know, Justin Trudeau let, let it all on the table. I was willing to go to Washington this week, try and sign up an, a NAFTA deal. Trump and I sitting down to the table, getting it all worked out. He got a call from Mike Pence. He said that, look, without a sense sunset clause, something that Canada is totally against, meaning that the NAFTA deal would expire every five years or so, Mike Pence told him there would be no deal. And so Justin Trudeau was left hanging, and he knew where this retaliation would go from there. So, so, so Paula, then what happens next? Because Wilbur Ross has made it clear that even though these tariffs are being put in place, technically he wants the NAFTA negotiations to continue. So from the Canadian perspective, are they still holding out hope at this point? Oh, absolutely. And they will continue to negotiate. This is all a bargaining tactic. And unfortunately, industries on both sides of the border, quite frankly, throughout the world, consumers and businesses will now be on the hook because they will be paying more for certain goods. Zane, this is a lot about the midterms in November. And Donald Trump wanted to make sure he had some cred on the campaign trail. 
He is terrified that the Democrats will take over the House. He wants this credibility in the Rust Belt. He wants some of those tight races to go the Republican way. I think he's going to take his chances over the next few months unless he can prove that he really did get the best deal possible from his trading partners on NAFTA. I actually want to bring in Atika Schubert. And Atika, I'm going to pose to you and get you to hop on the back of the last question I posed to the minister, which is all about uh, this report that, that Trump wants to target German car companies, specifically, uh, in his words, according to the report, until there are no more German car companies rolling down Fifth Avenue. What's been the response in Germany to that report? Well, obviously, Germany is not very happy about this. They don't want to see any sort of tariffs being put on its cars. Um, but, uh, you know, I have to point out that Trump seems to have had a longstanding problem with German cars. In a 1990 Playboy interview, for example, he said that he would, quote, tax every Mercedes-Benz rolling into the United States. So this is a longstanding thing with him. Um, and it, what'll be interesting to see is, you know, how he's going to justify any tariffs imposed on these cars. And we're talking about BMW that owns Rolls-Royce, Mercedes-Benz, of course, but also Volkswagen that owns, uh, you know, Bentley, Porsche, and Audi. Now, the, he's already set up an investigation saying, listen, how can we justify tariffs on luxury cars? And he wanted to do it on the issue of national security, which, uh, which for Germany sounds, it sounds ridiculous. And at the same time, uh, Germany is very angry to see the tariffs imposed on aluminum and steel. They've said they're illegal and incomprehensible. And that's why they're going to be joining in uh, this WTO legal action tomorrow. But at the same time, they don't want to see an escalation because they are worried that it could mean that President Trump goes even further and puts these tariffs on uh, Germany's luxury, luxury cars. All right, so they're going to make a complaint to the WTO. But, you know, a complaint to the WTO, Atika, could take one year, maybe two years, maybe even more than that to resolve. So it could be a long time before we get an answer. And then once you do get an answer, uh, either side could end up appealing. So it could be a really long time. I mean, how long is the EU prepared to wait to resolve all of this? That's a good question. And I don't know if if they're really expecting the WTO to put the pressure on the United States or if they're thinking that the retaliation tariffs that they may put on American goods are more likely to inflict some some damage in this trade war. In fact, you were talking about those products earlier. I actually printed out a list of the products they're considering putting on. This is a 10 page list of very fine print mm -hmm. and it includes, you know, everything from sweet corn, which is the first item on here, to playing cards at the end with hundreds of American American products in between. So I think this is much more likely to have an impact in pressuring the U.S. in that sense. The question is, what kind of duties are they going to put on these products? Will it be as high as 25 percent, such as the U.S. is doing with steel, or something less? Uh, and that's going to be the really fine balance that the EU and Germany are going to have to find. Just enough to say, listen, we're making a point and defending our own products, but not enough to sort of get to escalate the war any further with the United States.